enjoys that boat under behind. Number three. Number three, you got it. <laughs> I thought she might say two because sometimes she counts from this end instead of that end. That, but this, is there a boat there? There's a boat there. <laughs> it is time to fertilize. Yes, sir, fertilize. Now, you know, everybody fertilizes. We fertilize our yards, you fertilize gardens, you fertilize the food plots in the fall, you fertilize the plant in the spring, and, and uh, everybody fertilizes. We fertilize our lakes. And let me tell you, if you've got a private pond or a lake or someplace that you fish that even belongs to somebody else, if you do nothing else to that water, fertilize it. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We fertilize all summer. Here it is, uh, just about the end of April, getting toward the end of April. We start the end of April or early May to fertilize. And uh, we're going to circumvent one step. We normally drive our, our tractor off-road up there and load it up with, with fertilizer, come back here and load it into a boat. We're going to get a little smart this year. We're going to actually hook the boat up and haul the boat up to the barn, load the fertilizer in the boat, and we're going to get rid of one step. So pretty smart, huh? That was Chris's idea, but don't tell her I told you that. Yeah, baby. Let's put, gotta put that cover on. That's the only thing bad about, that's the only thing bad about uh, what we're doing is it's real dry. If we had a little moisture, it wouldn't be bad, but it's really, really dry. And, uh, and the boat will get just covered in dust. We don't want that to happen. So, but the one good thing is if we load, if we load the, I'm gonna take that back seat out too, because I think I'm gonna load it in the back. If we load the, if we load the, uh, I trim that motor up. That's probably good, man. It's a drain plug. Okay, I got the drain plug in. One of the great things about a, a tracker is the covers are so light and easy to put on. I love them. Let's see here. It's tight. That's a pretty tight fit. There you go. You can go ahead and fasten this. It doesn't. It's going to be really. Doesn't really have to be like we haul it. Don't have to be exactly like we haul it on the down the highway because we're just going to be on a ranch right here. We're just going to try to keep the dust out of it. It's all we're doing. But you really, it's a light cover, very easy to operate with, keeps it dry in the rain. Real simple deal. Keep the dust out of there right as we run around on the ranch, which that's the main thing that we're really, really concerned with is trying to keep the dust out. We put the, we put the fertilizer back there. I'll just throw it back there in the back. We've taken the seats out. I'll just throw that fertilizer back there in the back, and uh, we'll only have to load it one time, dump it in the lake. We're ready to go. Hope we got scissors, babe. I do. We got a strap up here, too. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> Hi there, Lu Lucy. You're not going. Hi, Lucy. You want to go, Lucy? You're not going. So of course no, I want to go. Y'all going to go on the yeah. boat? I want to go in the boat. I'm not even going to much worry about that one. No further than we're going or anything, I think that'll be fine. Let me kind of throw it around there so it won't drag. All right, let's go. Woo! Uh, okay, Lucy, Milburn, y'all stay out of the way. We're going to get some fertilizer. You going with us, Beamer? Are you going in the truck? I got it. Poor Beamer. We have no room for you to ride, Beamer. You can go in the boat. We come back, maybe, Beamer. Watch for your deer. Where are the deer? A crunch. Look at that. Ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> it came between the truck and the I boat. I know. It. She goes between the truck and the boat. Silly thing. I think that feed is on this side of the building over here. Not in the middle. I think if we can back through those doors there, we might be just about right. 
The less you have to carry it, the better, huh? Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, he's already put it on? Oh, no, no, no. It's, he, it, he got, he's, but he got the, went over and welded it on, grinded it off. Everything's ready. My gloves. Yeah, we're only going to have to take the back off, really. We're going to have to take the whole cover off. Yeah, just pull that, pull that hard, and we'll lay that up. Get about 20 bags. That's probably good enough. We probably are going to have to put it maybe on both sides. So it won't all be on one side. I've got four over here. <laughs> you got four over there. Way to go, babe. You're doing good. What we're using on this, let me show you what we're using here. This is uh, this is Sports Max. This is my tenth bag right here. This is Sports Max. I, I get a couple of pallets in. It'll last me for the summer. This is by Southeastern Pond Management out of Auburn, Alabama. They got offices in Birmingham and Jackson, Tennessee. It's a 10-52-4. This is a fertilizer, water-soluble fertilizer. It dissolves instantly, so you'll see when we dump it in the water, it just turns into a white cloud. It, it dissolves instantly. You don't have to have any platform. You don't have to do any mixing, no messes. Uh, you put about four pounds per acre. That's pretty much what we do, and it dissolves quickly. It, this increases your fish production by like three or four or five times. I mean, it's amazing what it does. Uh, it, it's made especially to put into small lakes and ponds. Our lake's 130 acres, the other one's 77 acres. And if you look down through here, you can see exactly what's in it. Here's your total, total nitrogen, 10%. Available phosphate, and this is the most important thing. For available phosphate, 52%. Potash, 4%. Plus 10, 52, 4. Most fertilizers, numbers will tell you what is in those fertilizers. And I'm not a fertilizer expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you do nothing else to your farm pond, if you, even if you've got a farm pond that you fish, it might not even belong to you, but somebody else allows you to fish it. If you do nothing else, fertilize. It's very, very important. When you fertilize, you start in your food chain from the bottom up. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create an algae bloom. You'll see when we get on the water, our water is dramatically clear. You only need to be able to see down about 18 or 20 inches max. That's it. And our water, you can see about 10 or 12 feet. It's dramatically clear. The vegetation's up. There's a lot of moss growth and, and, and dirty um, Grinch, Grinch grass in there that kind of looks like Grinch hair. It's Grinch hair grass. And I just made that name up, Grinch hair grass. <laughs> but it's kind of Grinch hair grass. And it, uh, it, it's a terrible stuff. But once you fertilize and you take the sunlight away from that, it'll kill that grass out. The bad grasses will go away. The good grasses will thrive. Now, all the grasses will grow dramatically over the next three or four weeks, uh, or well, really over the next week, and then they'll start, the water color will start changing, algae will start blooming, and, uh, and you'll, you know, your, your top of the food chain, your top of the food chain is the black bass, and that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to create really great, big, healthy bass, and the way you do it is you start from the bottom up, the way you do that is fertilizing. We'll talk a little bit more about that while we're out there putting it out, but... Putting it out is the easiest part. This is kind of the hard part right here, loading it up. Once you got it loaded up, and we've eliminated one step because we normally, we normally load these in the mule and then go down and put them in the boat. We've sort of eliminated that step. And how many have you got in your side, honey? I have uh, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Now I have nine. Now you have nine. You're doing good, babe. Oh, that's ten. I'm sorry. Oh, you have ten, huh? <laughs> Not only is she load fast, she knows how to count to nine, <laughs> not to ten. All right, tell you what, let's cover her back up. This is working a lot better, isn't it, than putting it in that mule? Uh, I bet you got tired loading in that mule, did. didn't you, babe? Huh? Not really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Doesn't really matter whether that's done or not, but probably it's better, easier than it is. Well, we have a little critter in the road. Now, if I was in my mule, I'd have a snake catcher. Uh, no, nah, it's not a rattlesnake. It's not a rattlesnake. That's not a, that's not a poisonous snake. 
that's a uh, not a very friendly snake. He's not, he's, but he's not poisonous. I think I'm just gonna let him go. I almost got on his tail. If that had been a rattlesnake, I'd have got me a stick and, and uh, caught him, even though I don't have my snake catcher. I, Chris just ordered two new snake catchers this week. Is that amazing? She just ordered two new snake catchers. I told her, I said, baby doll, I've got to have a snake catcher in every side by side, my, uh, and I've got to have a, a, a snake catcher in every vehicle. I just got to have one with me at all times. And if I had a snake catcher, I'd have gone in and caught that thing. We'd have gone and turned him loose. That is a, a non-poisonous snake right there, just a bull snake, I guess. I'm not a snake expert if it don't have rattles or if it's not a copperhead. If it's a copperhead or it's got rattles, it's a snake expert. But all this other kind is non-poisonous, I don't know what they all are. But, uh, but that was a big one. That was a nice big snake. He was this long. But uh, we let him go. <laughs> Let's put some fertilizer in the water. You can see all that dust on the cover, and it's not... I'll just put those through there. I didn't fasten that one. Just stuck it through there to hold it. You can see how much dust we got on this cover. And that all that dust would have been in the boat. But now it's just on the cover. When I back in, babe, I'm going to need to... Uh, I'm going to need to back in pretty slowly. I don't want to take any backwash over the over the back. I'll back it in fast like we do sometimes. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna set this cover. I'm gonna lay it on the back of that ram. Right now. That'll be fine. I use my backup mirror. Okay, we have the drain plug in. I have scissors somewhere in here. They're That's up there in the lovely. front. Uh, See if I can get my big butt in there. Well, I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Figured I was going to save you the problem. <laughs> Would I say that, honey? <sighs> Actually, I like big butts. <laughs> I'm going to put my phone in my pocket. 25 year anniversary model. Scissors? Ah. Okay, girl, let's uh, let's go down like uh, past our dock. Put in that big open water out there. We'll just make a big circle. One of the things about this lake right here, the Eagle, is uh, is it's uh, it's got a really good creek in it, so the water runs through it really well. So what we want to do, and, and uh, kind of depends on the, what type of water you're fertilizing, but what we want to do is uh, is we fertilize up in the upper end of the lake. It's about from where our house is down to the dam is uh, close to a mile, and and so we want to fertilize in the upper end of the lake because the, the lake's got a good current running through it because there's water running through pretty much all year long. We're supposed to get some rains tomorrow, maybe like an inch or inch and a half of rain. And uh, it's going to carry the fertilizer all over the lake. You don't have to go all over the lake. When we first started doing this years ago, uh, we, we'd, we'd fertilize all over the lake. We'd get in this bay right here, and we'd put three or four bags in this one, the next bay, the next bay, and go down around the dam. We'd fertilize everywhere. And we've changed over, and we don't really do that anymore. What we do is we just go to the upper end and fertilize in that upper end, put all, what do we got, 20 bags, 25 bags, 20 bags. We've got 20 bags. Take all 20 bags and uh, and we fertilize just up in that one area and let the natural flow carry it down and fertilize the rest of the lake. One of the things I think that does is it starts a good it starts a good algae bloom. A little bit to the left. It starts a good algae bloom. I'm gonna run over those trees right here. It starts a good algae bloom and uh, it starts in the upper end and just kind of brings the algae bloom on down with it and fertilizes the entire lake. We're gonna go ahead and start right in here. Throw it neutral, babe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start right in here because the wind is blowing out of that southeast and, and we got a, we got a pretty pretty heavy, I don't know how to use those gloves, probably shouldn't be using gloves. We got a pretty, the wind's blowing this way so I want the, everything to go back that way uh, as opposed to get up in the boat. Now we have to back in the boat off after we get through here, but uh, the only thing I get in here is I kind of get a cramp every now and then in my legs, but this is a real, this is an easy part of the job right here is actually putting it in. All you gotta do is 
open her up a little bit. Chris is going to try to keep it into the wind without moving very fast or very far. Get that cut open and simply start dumping. Now again, we're trying to, since I've got this in the back of the boat, which is where we would put it, you see how that's turning? That's completely water soluble. Dump it down in the water. We'll keep the wind behind us where I'm not getting stuff all over the boat. Try to get myself a little room to operate here. I could actually probably take my pocket knife and maybe do it quicker than I'm doing it with this. Keep moving, babe. Keep the boat moving there. It's just not a not a very difficult job at all. In fact, this the, the actual fertilizer this piece of cake. The hardest thing is loading everything up. This is the easy part right here. Lucy likes to fertilize because she likes to ride in the boat. Milburn hadn't seen any fertilizing yet, so we don't know whether he'd like it or not. It's the first fertilizing of the year. Now, what we're trying to do, see how clear the water is? Dramatically clear. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create, we're trying to create an algae bloom. That algae bloom is going to turn the water a different color. It won't be near this clear. It'll have a nice color to it. I mean, it'll be a beautiful color. And when you get a algae bloom really going good, really good, your algae bloom is going to be, algae bloom is going to be, your water's going to have a little bit of a green tint to it. I've actually seen lakes and have friends that take their, they put so much fertilizer in, they turn, they turn their lake into, they turn their lake into, it looks almost like pea soup. That's how green it is. And those lakes though, you'll catch some of the healthiest bass that you have ever seen. I can remember one time going out to Okatia Golf Course out in Phoenix and all of their water was the greenest looking water I have ever seen. I mean, it was just unbelievably green. It looked like, it looked like pea soup. That's what it looked like. But the bass that we caught fishing on that golf course, they give us permission to fish on the golf course. A lot, a lot of houses around that golf course. They give us permission to fish. This is my bag, it was leaking right here. I'm gonna do this in a little bit differently since I had a leak. That, that leak is probably a mouse. If I got a mouse, probably got in that bag. Careful, Jimmy, and don't, don't get your finger down in between them scissors right there. That would be bad. See how strong that wind is? Really blowing. If the bass in that place at that Okatia Golf Club out in Phoenix was unbelievable. I mean, I'm telling you, a little bass this long weigh like five pounds. They're unbelievable. Unbelievable. I actually caught about a five pound bass had a, a golf ball down in his throat. I couldn't hardly get my hand down in there to get the golf ball out. That's how small his mouth was and the fish weighed about four pounds, five pounds. And he had that golf ball down. They sure do eat some funny stuff. And I got to looking, I got to looking and sure enough, was one of the golf balls I'd hit in the water earlier in the day. Yeah, right. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> You're not believing that story? I'm not believing it. Honey. Do we want to go down, turn around, come back? Honey, it's a fish story. Yeah, we do. Uh, but I won't get these last two bags in. This will be 10 bags. We'll go on the other side over a little bit and uh, put the other. I don't want to get too carried away here. I'll cut my finger off. I don't want to do that. that Scissors wouldn't cut your finger off, but it it sure make you say ouch. Make some people say a dirty word. Might make me say a dirty word. I don't know. That's nine. Just that quickly, that's nine bags in there. You see all this grass out here? This grass now, 
will grow all the way to the surface. This whole upper end right here, you can see it's got grass. Once we get these fertilizer in there, this grass will actually end up growing all the way to the surface. The first time we fertilized, Chris liked to kill me. I mean, she would have killed me, but I had all the ammunition hid. And uh, she said, you run the lake, there's 40 acres of water that you can't even fish, it's all grass. And I told her, I said, honey, don't worry. Once that algae bloom gets going, once that algae bloom gets going, that grass, that grass is going to, going to go away. And, uh, and it'll be gone. All that water will open up. That grass will be down in the water. It'll be great fishing, beautiful fishing. The water color will be good. We'll catch more fish. We'll catch bigger fish. The fish will grow better. Don't worry about it. And you know what she said? She said, are you sure? <laughs> I told her, well, of course I'm sure. You know, I've studied enough lake biology and I've got a lot of good friends that are, that are biologists. And I said, absolutely, I'm sure. Once we get that algae bloom going, that grass is gonna back down. That old junky Grinch grass, Grinch hair grass, it's gonna go away. I said, it's gonna be, gonna be wonderful. You're gonna love it. And she said, you're positive. Bags. And I cross, I cross my fingers, and I said, "I'm positive. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> I did not have a clue." But it turned out okay. All right, babe. Well, we got that done. We'll go put this thing on the trailer. We'll go back and uh, get some uh, another. What do you think on another lake? Fifteen bags. Think be enough on that lake? Probably. That's seventy-seven acres. It's one thirty. Probably, actually, we probably don't even need you. You ought to put, you know, when you first fertilize, maybe four to eight pounds an acre. Uh, those are 25 pound bags that we've got, so a bag will do whatever, you know, uh, three to six acres, depending on how thick you're putting it. I, I want to probably fertilize again in about two weeks, so don't get too carried away. You're running on the stalks. Probably uh, fertilize again, slow down a little bit, and uh, probably uh, fertilize again in about. Uh, uh, in about three weeks because this one will probably not get an algae bloom in this first fertilizer. We'll probably have to fertilize twice. So I'll probably do it again in about three weeks. Remember that big stump over here. And, uh, but, uh, so, but anyway, this will get it started right here. We're going to go put this thing on the trailer, go back up and get 15 bags and go put it in another lake and uh, uh, get these big fish going in that one too. Hey, if you're not subscribed to Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube, make sure you subscribe. We do a lot of fun things here on the ranch. We give a lot of fishing tips. We, uh, we show full shows on here. We do lots of stuff. We do a lot of how-to tips, teaching you how to catch more fish, how to be more successful out there, how to tie knots, how to pick your lures, all kinds of really cool stuff. So if you're not subscribed to Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube, make sure you do so. We also have our Catch of the Day channel. That's our Catch of the Day daily devotional where we give a fishing tip a scripture and a devotional for every single day. We post those at five o'clock every every morning, 365 days a year. So go very kind of close to those trees. Don't run over these out here. And uh, so, oh, you can go ahead. <laughs> you just run over them. I don't care. <laughs> if she's only been fishing this ranch for 15 years, you'd think she knows where those trees live. But it's okay. That's all right. She'll find them. One thing, good thing about that 40, it's only down the water about that far. You can come over some actually pretty tall trees and, uh, and not, not hit them with your motor. But be sure to hit that subscribe, hit that uh, little bell there so it'll ding every time we do a video. You won't miss a single Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube video. We need you, if you're watching this video, to subscribe. If you've got a private lake, if you've got a pond, if you've got even a pond that you're fishing, somebody else is tell them, hey, let me fertilize your lake and make your pond better for you. Very inexpensive on two and three and four acre lakes, five acre lakes, inexpensive thing to do. Fertilize during the summertime. Some people fertilize all year long, we don't. We start in uh, usually the end of April, first of May. We'll fertilize all the way up through October, about once a month, about once a month. Guys and girls, have you a great time out there. See you out on the water. <laughs>